live 2002. So during this interim period where we had released Fields of Yesterday, I was writing and writing and writing lots of stuff. The band had been on a bit of a hiatus. So we were still trying to figure out um, where are we going to go? What do you guys want to do? How are we going to approach this with a new label? We had started to have uh, started having some offers to come in, but we wanted to be as we had already been in three other label situations and uh, had not worked out the way that they should have, the way we deserved them to. We wanted to be in a great situation. So uh, we were doing some shows. I was doing near life experience at the time. And I think there was a, a period where we were trying to figure out who wanted to keep moving on and who wanted to go try other things. Now, my writing was getting a uh, little bit, I would say, a little bit uh, more, I, lack of a better term, creative, more avant-garde, a little bit more uh, extreme. You know, I was writing some songs that were seven, eight, nine minutes long. I wasn't trying to write another dream of a lifetime or true believer or show a little love. I was just writing, writing. Um, so at that point, the band was morphing a lot too as well. So we had an offer to do a live album. Now, I never have been a big fan of live albums. I don't think they really capture the essence of the show. And the whole thing about live is not just what you hear, but what we're seeing and the feel, and the volume, and the crowd, and the entire vibe. It's a multi-angular situation. So I was reluctant at first, but there was a label out of Texas, and they said, look, we want to do this. We really feel like, you know, the, the live Lillian Axe show is amazing, and it needs to be captured. So I said, okay, here's the deal. We'll do it. But if it does not come out well and it does not capture the essence of the show, I'm not putting it out. We'll take those tracks and shelve them. If we have a deal, we have a deal. And they said, yes, we do. So we did a show in Houston, Texas, a place called the 19th Hole. And it was packed to the gills. We brought in sound. We brought in a great engineer. And we did a show highlighting what we felt were the top 20 songs uh, that would come across live and be a true uh, capture of the Lillian Act spirit. And um, when we got back with the tracks, we were like, wow, we really played well that night. It was really good. So I said, okay, but that's great. Performance is good. It's got to sound good. Got to sound good. So we went in the studio and we spent a lot of time mixing that thing. And it wound up coming out very well. And I have had numerous fans and uh, uh, magazines and, and online sites that have uh, cited Live 2002 as one of their favorite uh, live albums. And I see it in the same circles as like four or five other great live albums from other bands that I really thought were great live albums. And I'll see it in those same groups mentioned as best live rock albums. So it's an honor. And we really, uh, we spent a lot of time on making sure that not only did it sound good, but that it captured the vibe. And it's kind of funny to do a live record because you are trying to perform and entertain the crowd, but you're also making sure, hey, look, what you play is what you get. So you're trying to make sure that your performance is good. You're not making errors because I don't care who you are in a live setting. Everybody makes mistakes. Drummers, singers go flat. They forget words. Guitar players hit bad notes. That's part of life. If you ever hear a flawless live album from a band, I guarantee you they touched it up. So we wanted to make sure this captured. I think we did a very good job, and it's, uh, it's the only live album we've ever done and might be the only one we ever do.